Hi everyone, Ian here. Let's take a very brief look at the layout shape. So I've got a bunch of rectangles just all arranged in a line here. And let's say that I want to arrange these so that they will respond to a layout. And by default, that layout is going to be the size of the composition, but you can set that to be whatever you want. So to add something to a layout, what you need to do is right click, and then you can go embed in horizontal layout, embed in vertical layout, or embed in grid layout. You can also do this from the create menu where you go layout, embed in horizontal vertical grid. Let's choose horizontal layout. So this creates a layout shape. It pops all of the layout items in there. You can get rid of items by hitting the cross. You can drag new ones in here if you want to. You can remove individuals from here by clicking the eye. You can just basically tell them to be ignored for now. And then we've got some settings for our layout. We've got the horizontal layout. We've also got the vertical layout. And we've got the grid. I'll go into the grid in a minute, but let's stick with horizontal. Horizontal and vertical are basically the same thing. It's just in a different direction. So we've got this um, padding. So the padding on the left and the padding on the right. Um, we've got auto spacing. What auto spacing will do is it will fill the layout. So the layout size is by default set by the composition. Although you can disconnect this by hitting the cross and set a custom size for your layout. So if I hit auto spacing, it's going to space all of these items out over the size of the layout and then obviously taking into account the padding. This means that if I change the size of the layout, which in this case is the size of the composition, the layout will respond accordingly. Actually, let's set that back to 1920 because it's going to come in handy later. So we can also reverse the layer order. We can shuffle the items kind of randomly so you can make a random layout. Then we've got some more options down here. So if I turn off auto spacing, so everything's over on the left hand side, I can set a manual spacing if I want to. But then I can also add a spacer. So if I click add spacer, what that's gonna do is it's gonna create this kind of invisible item and this invisible item can go between any other layers. You just need to drag it to reorder it in here. And what the spacer will do is it will push everything to the opposite ends of the layout. So in here, We've got the black and green on one side of the spacer, black and green, and then we have the other colors on the other side of the spacer. And that means that black and green have been pushed to the end. We can also just make that just the black one being pushed to the end. And then of course, that obviously still responds to the layout. Another thing we have is the ability to set some settings based on the layout type. So in here, we've got the, the horizontal controls, which means that we can adjust the vertical alignment of one of our shapes in the layout. This is where the top and bottom padding come into effect. So we've got vertical padding here. That vertical padding is going to affect where these can get pushed to with their vertical alignment. And then we've also got baseline. That's useful if you're using text because it will align everything to the baseline of the text. And of course, this is live. So if I change the width of something, say the blue rectangle here, this all just gets pushed out. So that's the horizontal layout. Let's take a look at the grid layout. So I'll select my shapes again. This time I'll go right click and embed in grid layout. So by default, the grid layout has columns and rows. We have three columns and three rows. So I can change this if I want to, to be two rows. We've also got the horizontal padding and the vertical padding you're familiar with from the other layout. And we've got the cell margins. This is new. So the cell margins will eat into the cells to make the shape slightly smaller. We can also flow columns and flow rows. This doesn't make a huge difference at the moment, but it just changes the direction in which we lay out. So at the moment we'll lay out shapes going from the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one. But if you choose flow uh, rows, you would go first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, like that. You can again reverse and shuffle the layout. Then we've got some more options down here which are unique to the grid. So we can scale our shapes to fit the cell. So obviously our shapes are very small, so we're scaling to fit the cell. We're also keeping their aspect ratio. If we turn this off, you'll see a more accurate representation of the cell size. We've got some interesting options over in the layout items. But to, in order to demo those, I'm going to increase the row count by one leaving some space at the bottom. So I've got three empty cells here. So let's say that I want this gray cell here to take up a larger space. Say I want it to occupy four cells down here in the bottom right. 
Let's open the options for the grey rectangle. And then let's check fixed position. And let's select a position. So we count, by the way, we count um, from zero. So column zero, column one, column two, row zero, row one, row two. So I want to go column one, row one. So I'm going to go column one, row one. So our grey rectangle is now here. And then I'm going to say that the span, so this is how wide it is, it's going to span two cells in either direction. So I'm going to say span two columns and span two rows. Now that takes up all of that room. But let's say that I want to put some text in here. So I, instead of this just being a rectangle, I want it to be something more complex. Well, that does get more complicated. In order to demo this, I'm going to remove all of the padding from the edge of the from the edge of the uh, layout and I'm going to set the cell margin to zero. So this basically means that every cell has the same aspect ratio as the composition. So we're just taking the composition and divided it into equally sized cells. So the, the aspect ratio is going to be the same, which means that I can just make a new composition, go in here. So this will be 1920 by 1080 because that's my default. So that's the same aspect ratio as 1920 by 1080. And what I can do is I'm, I'll make a background in here and I'm just going to, with the background shape selected, I'm going to select my light gray color and then I'm going to create a piece of text. So I'll just, I'm going to drag a rather large text box and we'll say cavalry. And then on a new line, I'm going to say 1.1 maybe. Let's select all the text. Choose my weather sands. And then let's change the font size to make that larger, like so. And then that's my cell and back in the other composition I'm going to delete the rectangle delete the grey rect and then I'll bring in my composition and I'm going to connect that up to the layout shape I could also do this by dragging it in I need to turn that off then let's go into the layout shape here and then we'll adjust the settings for this composition so remember it was fixed one whoops that's one, one, two, two, two. And there you go. So you just need to be wary of the aspect ratios when you're laying things out in the cell like that. Of course, if you wanted to randomize everything else, note that the cell we have made fixed position will be ignored by the shuffle. And that's your lot for a quick look at the layout shape in Cavalry 1.1. As ever, let us know what you think.